So now we're going to begin the panel. And I'm going to be very honest with you. I had a whole bunch of questions written out. You guys have such long resumes. And She's saying about, we're old. Yes. No, no. <laughs> oh, my God. No. I'm saying you guys are legends. You have such an incredible body of work. Oh, God. But I, uh, I can't find my questions. I'm not even going to lie. I'm going to, be trans I'm going to be transparent. I can't find my questions. So can everybody hear me? I don't want to feel like I'm yelling. You can't hear me? Wow, can we turn that up? Okay, I'll just kind of speak really loud, and if it gets obnoxious, somebody raise their hand. Okay. So I was just saying, I can't find my questions because you guys have such a long, like, resume that I had so much to ask you. Um, but when you look back on your careers, is there one moment, one highlight, or a couple highlights that stick out for each of you that you want to talk about? I think it's the night you left my house at Thanksgiving and went out and got pizza. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I, oh, Jesus, yeah. It has nothing it, to do with <laughs> I was, uh, I was dating a friend of Adrian Barbeau's, uh, they were in Greece together. Garn Stevens uh, played Jan. Adrian, who did you play? The Rizzo. 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 <laughs> and the original company of Greece in New York. But Adrian was out in L.A. And not together with John yet. Uh, were you? No. No, no. 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 But she was living in one of the canyons and invited us <laughs> to Thanksgiving dinner. And I smoked a little too much weed with Mikey Malone. <laughs> Michael Malone, God bless his heart, and um, I got paranoid, and and I didn't want to wait for the turkey to well, be and, finished. And the and turkey I, was taking much too long because the uh, chef had cooked too much, I smoked too much weed. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. I'm so not I would saying who the chef was. But. I would I would down, <laughs> I would down the hill the Baronis for pizza in. Uh, <laughs> In Burbank, yeah, I went a, a whole lot uh, the town over. <laughs> I think that was probably maybe that was the first time we really met. Was yeah, it? yeah. I, think, I think it was. <laughs> I thought later, sitting eating the pizza and drinking beer, Jesus, I must think I'm a real jagger for Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't really answer your question. But <laughs> no, no, no. You know, Tom and I have done four films together. We've never had a scene together, but we've done four films together. Yeah, that that I love telling people that. That always surprises <laughs> them and amazes them. How can you be in four movies together and never be on film together? Because we're in two different parts of the movie. Yeah, yeah. I just found out that I did a movie with Robert Downey Jr. I didn't know that. He did was, you? He was in Back to School. I didn't know that. I've only wow. seen it once, and it was wow. a thousand years ago. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we did Escape from New York. We did The Fog. We did Creepshow. Two Evil Eyes. Two Evil Eyes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Creepshow. And Creepshow. And Creepshow, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> what's the next question? I'm sure we didn't yeah. answer that one at all. <laughs> That's okay. I was just talking about the, the highlights in your career, because you both have worked with amazing directors. Romero, Carpenter, I mean, so is there anyone who's had a big influence on your career? Well, John had a big influence on mine because he, I got to do The Fog. It was my first real uh, film out in, in LA. I had done uh, a couple little parts and stuff in New York, The Detective with Frank Sinatra and, and uh, oh God, Where's Papa with Carl, Carl Reiner. Yeah, I, I think I arrested a German Shepherd dog. <laughs> And it was, uh, John was a, a, a big uh, impact in my life in a big way in, in films, for sure. I love doing um, The Fog with him, and I thought it was a wonderful little old-fashioned ghost story, kind of. Um, and then uh, Halloween 3, he produced... But he, though he didn't direct it, Tommy Lee Wallace directed it, but John had a lot to do with that. And Escape from New York. And it was, uh, 
I had, a, I had a wonderful time working with him, and he is a he is a genius at at, at making films scary without being gory. Well, Halloween was a little scary here, you know. In, in a, in a harsh way. Okay, I'll tell one short story about Halloween. I tell it, it embarrasses her, but Garn and a friend of hers, Jeannie, <laughs> who is married to a Russian restaurateur or something, we, we go to see Halloween at a screening at the, at the, uh, at the Directors Guild. And uh, Garn and Jeannie are on either side of me. I'm in the middle, and we're sitting. We we never met John. We knew that they were dating. I had just, serious. I had just announced on Johnny Carson that yeah. we were engaged. Engaged. At very five serious. That afternoon, and then I came yeah. to the screening. Very serious. And so we're watching the film, and it starts. And before long, both of the, the ladies on either side of me are like this. <laughs> Can we look now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, look now. Oh, son of a bitch, you. And at the end of the movie, they both looked across me and said, We can't let Adrienne marry this guy. <laughs> To no avail. To no she avail. Did. To no avail. Yeah. I did. She did. <laughs> and I would say that John, uh, for many reasons, was the director who most impacted my life. I first worked with John and met John on a television film. It was his first union film called Someone's Watching Me. And, uh, um, and that's how we met. And... I remember the first day I did the scene. I, I played the first lesbian woman on, on uh, network television, I believe. Nobody's ever, yeah, never, cool. ever contradicted that. Yeah. I was really, you know, proud of that. It was handled very nicely. This is back in 1978. First day, we did the first scene. And John came up and he said, that was great, that was great, do less. And I said, what? And he said, do less. And all of a sudden it was like the proverbial light bulb went off and I understood film acting, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, do less, okay. Yeah. And I carried that with me for until I ended up with George Romero. Yeah. <laughs> who was saying, do who more. Who said, do more. all you want. <laughs> yeah. Do but, everything. Um, <laughs> and then John, in, in, um, in 1978, when I was just finishing Maud, uh, if you were on a television series, you could not get seen, you couldn't even get auditioned to do features because the yeah. prevailing thought was uh, nobody's going to pay in a movie theater to see somebody they can see for free every Tuesday night on, on te television. Yeah. And so John wrote and offered me the role of Stevie Wayne in The Fog and that was my first feature. If that hadn't come along, who knows how long it would have been before mm -hmm. I had made the transition. And then because by that time we were uh, romantically involved, and because that was my first film, which was a horror film, then I sort of became identified as a, a horror actress, or a genre actress, even though I did Cannonball Run and Back to School and other comedies and a lot of TV and everything. Cannonball Run is a classic. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So speaking of the horror genre, I know you guys have been in so many like beloved classics, and what do you think when you see either remakes or new horror films that come out like within maybe the last 10 years? Because it seems the classics from the 70s and 80s are so, they stand the test of time, and they become so much a part of like the fabric of everybody's lives who's here. That's why they're here. So when you see, I don't know if you watch current horror films, how do you feel about them as compared to the ones that you guys were in? Well, I, I've never seen um, the remake of The Fog, and I never heard anyone say a good word about it. Ditto. <laughs> and uh, 
I've only heard terrible things about it, so I never had any desire to go see that. And I don't care what it was like as a remake. But I, I can understand why people make remakes, you know, of films. They, and they've been doing it forever, and I was just telling someone earlier today about I, I love to watch Turner Classic movies, and I uh, love Casablanca is my favorite film uh, ever of all time. But uh, the Maltese Falcon come up on the listings, and I thought uh, all I saw was Maltese Falcon. And I hit record for that time, and I was doing other stuff. But when I played it, it had been made in 1933 by a bunch of people, the, the guy was famous at the time, but I, I didn't know him, and it was awful, just awful. So that was an example where, where a remake was way better when uh, uh, Bogart and all those guys did it in the 40s. But it was only 10 years after the original, and it was just, that original should have been remade. It should never have been, been made. But anyway, remakes are remakes, and people will make them always. And But I think ours hold up um, because you, the stories were good. The characters were really good. You could care about them, root for them, hope that they didn't get slaughtered. And things like Saw and Chainsaw Massacre, I, I could care. I don't care. Because I don't care about anybody in them. I don't ever get to know them. But I have seen one new horror movie. I don't know if it's quite horror. Taylor told me, Dad, you got to see this. Get Out. Yeah, Get Out. I thought Get Out was great. I love that. I love it. It's a wonderful, uh, scary movie. Great. I don't like horror films. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't go to yeah. see them. I don't like them. I've never seen Psycho. I don't like to be scared. Um, I do some uh, video uh, audio description for the blind. So occasionally I have to, you know, I'm not watching it, but I'm reading a script, you know, for the blind, so I am familiar with some of the stuff that's been done. What I realize, or what I notice in screenplays that are sent to me, you know, with an offer, mm. is that I can't get through the first five pages, because on page two, somebody just got annihilated, you yeah. know, in the most bloody, yeah. gory way. I don't even know who it is. I don't... Yeah give a damn, uh, and I think that's the problem with so yeah. many of the films that have been made in the last decade. Maybe that's changing, yeah. I hope, but um, I think Tom said it all. The reason those films from the 80s hold up is you cared about the people. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, and, and John, certainly his philosophy was what we can visualize can be so much scary or, or, you know, violent or whatever than what they're throwing up on screen. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you go back and look at Halloween, you don't see much. No. Right? Uh huh. And even the no, fog, that, I don't think you see much, do you? God, that was scary. The <laughs> fog. Scary. No, the fog, well, no. I did see Halloween once. It was that same night. Yeah, yeah. You know, when, yeah. when I just announced my, my, uh, engagement. my engagement to yeah. the director. And by the time the thing was over, John, who was sitting next to me, was black and blue. Because I kept going like, oh my god, oh my god, you know, he's going to fall. And that's why I don't go see him. Well, I mean, it's funny that you say that because you're such a beloved figure in the horror genre, so. Oh, I love uh, doing them. They're wonderful to do. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, uh, they are. I just did one with Ray Wise, my compatriot from uh, Swamp Thing. Uh, it's more of a psychological thriller. Yeah. Um, and uh, But, you know, a, a flat-out horror film gives you the opportunity to really go hog wild yeah. and have a great time. Yeah. So I'm just going to ask one more question before I open it up because we have a packed room here. Tom, Halloween 3. 
good movie. Yeah. Yeah, right. really good All movie. Right. That's right, Silver eh, Shamrock. Eh, 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 eh. Three more days till Halloween, Halloween, <laughs> Halloween. Three more days till Halloween, Silver Shamrock. Eh, awesome. eh, 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 eh. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to open it up to the audience, and because we have the corded mic here right now, um, I'm going to ask if anybody wants to ask a question to come up to the red carpet. Come on up. Yeah, you can form a line. That's Polly. Hey, Polly. Hey, hello. Hello. Swamp Thing, awesome. Love Thank it. You. <laughs> Night of the Creeps. Yeah. That line, the classic Thrill me. line. No, actually, my favorite line. I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is your dates are here. What's the bad news? They're dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Polly. Go ahead and pick up the Oh, wait, Polly. Polly, you have to. You're going to ask a question. Talk right into the mic. Are we getting a lot of feedback huh, or something on this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. My question's already. It's me. I'm so noisy. I'm sorry, Polly. Go ahead, man. Shoot. Because the microphone's So, stand right here. Okay. Sure. One second. I just wanted to record my answer. That's what I do. Sorry. Oh, he's got a list. I know. Paul's yeah. got a list. No, I'm a list. I just got my. That's not going on. Sorry. Yeah, it's going to Okay. All right. So in Halloween 3, it was a great movie and everything, but it did not have Michael Myers in it. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? I don't care. Well, a lot of the horror community did care. What were your thoughts? Like, I, I know you said it, but like, after the fact, do you ever like, wish he was in the movie? No. No? No. He was in the movie. Well, technically, Technically, yeah. in the background, in a, on TV well, or something, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, the question was, the brand new one coming out was supposed to be set in that time zone. So, do you like, now think that? Because you say that even Laurie Schrode the original, like Jamie the Curtis, she just confirmed yesterday yeah. that she was going into the yeah, I heard. Halloween. I just heard. So I, I heard it today for the very first time, so I have no idea what Halloween they're making. What I know um, uh, uh, the guy who did Drive Angry in um, My Bloody Valentine 3D said, what's his name? Your friend. Yeah, I know. I can't think of his name. Patrick Lussier. He said, um, when we were making Drive Angry, he said, I have a really nice part for you in Halloween 3 yeah. uh, with this Rob Zombie storyline that we're going to make, and you would be a psychiatrist in a hospital taking care of these crazy girls, these not so damaged girls. And I said, perfect. But the. Drive Angry did so badly that the money people took all the money away and said, no, you're not going to make Halloween 3. So, I have no idea what movie um, Jamie Lee's making or, or whose storyline or what, anything. Would you want me a part of it? Like, if they called you or do you want to like, be a part of it? Could you get Jamie Lee's in it? I mean... I mean, you were in the remake of uh, My Bloody Valentine. Of course, I would. So. My initial reaction would be, of course, yeah, I would love to be in it. But then, if I read the script, and on page two somebody is getting um, phallus through their yeah. eye socket, <laughs> I'm not interested. Yeah. I don't care who's in it. I'm, yeah. I'm, that's not my idea, uh, you know, so I, I don't know. I think it'd probably be cool for the horror community because John Carpenter signed on to it, Laurie Shrew, like they're all... Oh, yeah? Yeah. Good. John, John is not directing. Uh, he may be produ executive yeah, producing. Executive producing. Uh, Maybe may the score. he will score it. Yeah. Maybe. Adrian may know much more about this than I do. Yeah. Only because I read it online. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Can we ask questions to Adrian Bowles as well? Yeah, of course. Okay. Does anybody else have questions they want to ask? Can I have one question before I leave? Yes. All right. It's for Adrian. 
Um, it is actually going around about Jeepers Creepers 3 of how you um, even put on Facebook of how you denied the, deny the um, uh, being in the movie. Uh, the story for me on Jeepers Creepers 3 is that we were in negotiation and the negotiations fell through. Yeah, but you also, yeah, but you also say that the script was good. I mean, the script was very well. I love the role that Victor wanted me to play. What was that what was your role? Uh, oh, she, it was. Uh, I don't. I don't know that the character. I don't know if the. I never saw the first two, so I don't know if she was related to the first two. It was a grandmother of. Trish. Kenny, no, somebody named Ken. <laughs> I don't know, it was just a good role. <laughs> she was a grandmother who saw her son who had been killed. I don't remember, <laughs> I'm sorry. But Meg Foster, uh, Meg Foster uh, is playing the role and I'm sure she's great. Thanks, Polly. I mean, no, I mean, there are other people waiting here. All right, thanks, though. Thanks. Hi. Uh, the last time you worked with John Carpenter was 1982 on Halloween 3, and you uh, did a voice wall in the thing, right? I was the voice of the chess uh, computer. Okay. Yes. Uh, did either of you, after 1982, ever have other opportunities to work with him? Were you ever approached to be in his films again? John Carpenter? I don't think I ever did, did I? No, I don't, no, no. I don't think either of us I wanted did. to be in the thing. It was my favorite movie. Yeah. It's, what, it's what got me, uh, I mean, not John's version, but the original, the thing is what, what got me uh, loving uh, horror movies, scary movies, science fiction. It was... Yeah, that 1953 movie or whatever it was, uh, Howard Hawks directing and producing. That, that, um, but I couldn't grow a beard, and I, I don't think, I don't think uh, everybody we knew was in it. But yeah. I don't know about. Uh, I don't think I was ever approached after that uh, by uh, anything. Okay. All right. Okay, we're wrapping up. We only have like five minutes or so. I, know, I recognize Mike over here. Thanks. It's a very quick question. Um, I know you worked with Jason Miller on that championship season. Yeah, I did. And no, I did not on championship season. Oh, okay. But I, I worked with him uh, in a movie in Budapest called The Ninth Configuration. Oh, that's it, right. William Peter Blatty. And then his, <clears throat> his son played your son in Halloween 3, and I was always wondering if he came by the set for that one. We didn't even know all that. <laughs> did, you know, did you know that that was Jason Miller's son? Was it, are you uh, sure it was Joshua Jason? Miller, right? I had no clue. Is it they the kids I abandoned at the beginning to run away with Stacy Nelkin? Yeah. What the hell kind of a doctor was I? <laughs> I'm telling you, I, 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 I met them in one scene, and I don't know that I ever even met them. <laughs> I know, I know Nancy was the wife, but and I know I had two kids, but I had no idea Jason Miller's son was yeah. was in there. Okay. Oh. However, my however, Tommy's son in Creepshow was in reality, in real life, yeah. Stephen King's son, oh, yeah. who yeah. has yeah. now grown up to be Joe Hill, who yeah. hopefully all yeah. of you know. Yeah. 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 I just found that out. Like, really? Was, yeah. Well, really? I went to do a Comic Con when one of my books came out. Yeah. And Joe Hill and he came was up there. And introduced Lock himself. and Key. If you guys <laughs> haven't picked up Lock and Key, Joe Hill. Yeah. <laughs> Little plug for him. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. That was uh, <laughs> yeah, something know. interesting. Yeah, I never knew that. Okay, so I just had a question. Um, did you guys have like a great friendship before you started, or was like the experience of being in movies like the way your friendship like kind of blossomed together? No, we had a great yeah. friendship from the night I burned the turkey and went yeah. out and had pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, we were dear, fast friends. 
ever since that evening. And uh, thank God neither of us decided to <laughs> forget forget you for smoking and leaving and forget you for burning the turkey. It was a weed, blame it on the weed. But we were <laughs> but we we've been good friends for a long time. Yeah. Okay, last question. Come on up. I will say that one of the major reasons I do any of these conventions is in the hopes that Tommy will be there. Ah, oh, thanks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they, the only time we get to see you. But they are fun, aren't they? they are They're fun. nice. And you guys, this the fans, your fans are the great. You're, you're great. You're great. Uh, so the last question that I have for you guys, uh, I know you guys both worked in uh, Escape from New York. What was your uh, guys' um, what was it like working with uh, Harry Dean Stanton, who recently just passed away? I wonder if you guys had any fun memories working with him. You didn't have any scenes Only you can answer that. Yeah. yeah. Because Tommy didn't have any scenes with yeah. him. Uh, I, I don't know if any behind the scenes for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, he was no. a sweetheart to work with. He was, um, I think he was probably the only one of the five guys who wanted to ad lib and John doesn't John doesn't go for no, ad libbing no. too much. So there were occasions when, you know, John was saying, uh, Harry Dean, you know, let's get back to the words. But uh, he was he was a dear. He was just a dear. He's just one of those guys you saw everywhere. Like no matter what movie yes. Christine, yes. Uh, Twin Peaks, everywhere you saw him. Yeah. Yeah. Big love. Oh yeah, that, that big too. Big love. He was yeah. brilliant in oh. big love. Yeah. Yeah, I never, that, that was another, one of the four that we were in together, but not together at all, because we, because I was out at Sepulveda Dam with Lee Van Cleef and a couple other guys, but <laughs> supervising, well, sort of supervisor, keeping an eye on what was going on in Manhattan prison. And, but they, they all went to East St. Louis, St. Louis or some yeah. awful part of the, the <laughs> country. And um, we were in California, so uh, I didn't get to meet Harry Dean or, or uh, uh, the, uh, the dear old guy Ernie. that died. Ernie. Ernie. Ernie, or Ernie or Donald Bornine, yeah. Or Donald. Or, yeah. Yeah. None of, none of those people. My first introduction to Donald Pleasance, I know we're almost out of time, but... Well, I did get to meet Donald. Did you do, Yeah, at Donald, the end, yeah. The funniest, one of the funniest men I've ever worked with. I mean, I was constantly <laughs> laughing. Um, but I was doing Fiddler on the Roof on Broadway back in the late 60s. <laughs> and Donald was in the theater next door doing Man in the Glass Booth. I oh, think yeah, think. yeah. And every night in my dressing room, I could hear him screaming. Through, really? Through two brick walls. You know, he wow. was. I could. I could hear his performance. Jeez. And that's the first time. I thought, Who is that? You know, Jeez. oh, Donald Pleasance. But he was a his and his. Was he Eichmann? Funny man. Was he a, a, a portray Eichmann? The guy, the the German uh, Nazi, so. yeah, so. death camp guy. Yeah. I never saw it because I, I was so. doing Fiddler at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I could hear it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I just want to end by saying thank you guys so much for coming out to Connecticut. You're both legends. Yeah. We absolutely love you. How about a little standing ovation for these two? Oh, thank God. you so much. Thank you. Thank guys. you. Thank you all. We wouldn't be here without you guys. You're the best. Thanks. That's for sure. That's for sure.